right, let's clarify this shit. Now, in my last vid, we went over the detective board and the connections between the five assassins that Merc the Fam and whatever, right? And so because I love y'all, I'm gonna do my best janitor impersonation and clean this shit up. Now first I'm gonna talk about the different assassins connections on each other and then I'm gonna do a little bit more of an elaboration on the death counter and the stat changes and I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on what you should try to do when the game comes out in under a month. Now first let's start with Fangji and Kuroki's connection. Now Fangji and Kuroki are connected in what feels like more of a business tie because Fangji created a successful company a few years prior to when the game starts and she put up the money for the museum and the gallery that Kuroki runs which Makes a lot of sense because they made a point to say that Fengji's company is big on investments in philanthropy. So them putting up the money for it makes a lot of sense and we still don't even know what the gallery or the museum consists of. But that aside, that's not where their connection ends because apparently they were also fighting side by side when they killed our main character's father. And just to add a little Yonko speculation, I feel as though Fengji is going to be the metal element assassin and Kuroki is going to be the water element assassin, but that's to be determined later. Now moving on to the next connection between Yang and Sean is we know that they were side by side when they destroyed Sean's father's kung fu school and our main character's father's kung fu school. And that's it. That's all we know about their connection. But if y'all want a little bit more info on each one of those assassins, y'all have to check out my other video breaking down the whole detective board. Moving on. Now Sean is damn sure the fire assassin. Let's just start there between the fire disciple that we saw in this demo and the fire flames that are on some of these enemies' pants and all this and all that. Pretty much clarifies that Sean is the fire assassin. Now as far as Yang goes, at first I was gonna say that I think he's the earth assassin, but they made a point to say that he lives above a refuge and that he doesn't seem in touch with the world, which seems a little out of character for somebody who's supposed to be an earth element person. Now it's arguable that Fajar, who's a part of the next connection we're gonna talk about, is the earth assassin, but I feel more like he's the wood assassin. But regardless, Fajar's connection is between him and Yang, and it consists of Yang ordering him to kill our main character. Now the question I have is who and what are we? So you know how we talk about how there's five assassins on this detective board, right? And there are. If you want to say that Fajar is one, Kuroki is one, Fangji is one, Yang is one, and Sean is one. Okay, all right, that's five different assassins, right? What if I told you there's a piece of this puzzle that's missing and that isn't really on the board yet? Perplexed? I know, I'm gonna explain it. So Soul Clap already confirmed that a lot of this has to do with Chinese mythology and that each assassin is connected to a certain element. Like I was saying, I think Fangji is the metal assassin. I think Kuroki is the water assassin. Sean definitely the fire assassin. I believe Fajar is the wood assassin. But what if I told y'all that Yang ain't one of those elements? What if I told y'all that Yang is what he is? He's Yang. Now, y'all already know about yin and yang, right? How yin and yang is dark and light and positive and negative and essentially energy needs both a positive and negative force. And it's less about good or bad or right and wrong and more about balance. So basically what I'm getting at here is yang is an enemy, but what if we're yin? My guess is that we're actually yin, which then also means that if there is another element, which would be earth, where they at? Cause they ain't on this damn detective board. I promise. I check. Trust me. Now what I will say that's a little ironic is that usually we're the light and not the dark. But in this case, just so y'all know, yin is the dark side and yang is the light side. That's just how yin and yang works. But also yang is the masculine side and yin the feminine side, which would explain why on a lot of these Twitter clips and a lot of these slow clap trailers, the main character is female. Peep that. You'll notice that Slow Clap has made it a point to use the female version of the character in most of their clips showing the game off as female. In the demo, you realize they use the female version of the character when you're making your settings. See you know what I'm saying? And just to give y'all a little side note in case y'all wanna hit up Google, if you look up what yin and yang energy are, you'll find that it'll say yin energy is more passive, feminine and cool, while the masculine energy of yang is active and heated. Yin represents the acceptance of what is, while yang represents the activity of doing and our attempts to change ourselves and the world around us. Hmm, kind of fire, no? Now, as far as who the earth element is, there's only one thing we know is that somebody's missing and that's people from our main character's family. In my case, I'm saying Yin's family. So if that's the case, maybe they were earth and they got rid of that element by taking out our family and our teacher. It's either that or 
we still got somebody we need to be introduced to. Hello, how are you? Now moving on to the whole stat changes thing. The stats don't actually change until you hit the age of 30. Now remember what that entails, that means you give more damage when you connect your hits, but you actually can't take as much damage. It's not that your health bar gets shorter or anything like that. It's just if you could take five hits before you turn 30, now you might only be able to take four. But now I wanna remind y'all that all this, the whole campaign takes place in the course of one night. Kind of like the movie Date Night, except we get to choose whether we play as Tina Fey or Steve Carell. I just hope this whole thing isn't over a flash drive because that would be less than anticlimactic. The point is you gotta be all five of the assassins and all of their students or henchmen or henchwomen, whatever you wanna call them, before getting too old and croaking for the last time. And now remember, after you croak for the last time, you gotta start the whole night over, which means you gotta start all five chapters over. But you do get to keep your permanent unlocks. Now the point of this tip that I'm about to give you is so that you have an idea of the ballpark of what kind of age you wanna be at at the end of each chapter. Or at the very least, the amount of years you don't want to go beyond in one chapter. Word to Drake, you can thank me later. Let's say the oldest age you can get to is 70. Now it's really around 73, 74 before having to restart if you die at that age, but let's just go with 70 because we're gonna have to do some clean division here. Now we know there's five chapters, right? So 70 divided by five is 14. All right, cool. So that means that in each chapter, you don't want to add more than 14 years to the age you were already at when you started the chapter. So if you start chapter two at the age of 30, you do not want to end chapter two at the age of 45 or 46. 44 should be your cutoff. Y'all with me so far? All right, bet. Now we all know in seafood that when you die, you get a death counter. And the death counter goes up one every time you die. And then when you die each time, that death counter gets added on as years to your age. So again, if you're 30 and you die, your death counter goes up by one and you turn 31. And if you die again, your death counter goes up by two. So you turn 33, get it? All right, cool. Now here's where the new info comes in that y'all may have not seen because it really hasn't been talked about unless it was in another creator's videos. It hasn't been talked about anywhere else. Those situations occur within the confinements of each room or stage if you wanna call it that. Dazed and confused? I know. Bear with me. I'll give y'all an example of what I mean. So, you know how in the demo when you walk through this door after beating the first three guys, you gotta fight all these people in this club scene, lobby, whatever thing. Then after that, you gotta fight Flashdance, my future wife. Now, the encounter between fighting all these bums and then fighting Flashdance all consists of one room or stage. Now, I know y'all are like, physically, they're all in the same room. Yes. But I'll give you another example later where it's not exactly the same room, but it's the same stage. So stage is probably better to use. So let's say before I got into this room, I died twice. So my death counter is at two and my age is at 23. All right, cool. Now, what happens is basically you can reset your death counter. Now there's an actual skill for that, but we'll talk about that later. When you go into this room and you beat all these enemies and then you beat my future wife, what happens is the death counter will now reset to one. If you in fact beat all of them without dying again. Of course, if you died again, then your counter would have gone from two to three and then you would reset back to two after you beat her. Making sense? All right, now each chapter has a bunch of these stages. And if we go back to the division we were doing before, the way I look at it is, Let's say you do 70 divided by five, you get 14. And then in each chapter, you don't wanna age more than 14 years. Okay, cool. Now, if there's 14 stages in each chapter, that means Soul Clap is allowing you to die once in each one of these stages. Get it? Now this is all in case you wanna end the game fighting the last assassin in the last fight at your maximum age, which we don't wanna do because the chances of us getting clapped in our first encounter fighting the last assassin it's kind of high, I'm not even gonna lie to you. And let's just keep it 100. If we get to our max age and we fight the last assassin and the first time we fight them, we lose, and we gotta start the night all the way over, we gonna be mad as hell. And if you're not, that's because you're insane. Now again, if that happens, you get to keep all of your permanent unlocks and because this game is gonna be very fun, it won't be the worst thing in the world, but seriously, you don't wanna die the first time at your max age fighting the last assassin and have to start the night over. Trust me, that shouldn't be bad. The point is you really don't wanna add more than somewhere between five and seven years to your age each chapter. That way, you've reserved yourself many lives, i.e. you get a lot more chances at the last boss fight without having to start the whole night over. And keep in mind that each assassin is gonna be the 
toughest enemy you fought in each chapter. So you're gonna have to give yourself enough chances to beat them as well. So really, you don't wanna die too many times before facing these motherfuckers. <laughs> but y'all let me know what you think about all this down in the comments. And we're less than a month out from release. And I hope that y'all come back for my next vid, alright? I'm gonna catch y'all later. Peace.